Hi, Stephen Caleb with Brownells here, bringing you another episode of Smithbusters. And today, Caleb, very important topic. Very important topic indeed for both the shooter and hand loader alike, and it is you should lubricate your ammunition. Uh, okay, um, you mean like just oil it? Yeah, just like put gun oil on all of your rounds of ammunition. Are you afraid it's going to rust or something? I, I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> This is, this is a this is viewer requested. Okay, okay. So people are lubricating their ammunition. People are lubricating their ammunition, um, and maybe it's to compensate for just their gun not working right. They think it works better with lubricated ammo, which if it mm. does, there's some bigger problems here, which we'll get into kind of in a little bit to give you a better understanding. But uh, also like cha rusty chambers and stuff like that instead of cleaning the chamber. Or, Okay. Just lubricating the ammunition, which is um, an interesting band-aid for such a situation. But right. yeah, if you're needing to lubricate your ammunition to get your firearm to function, there are bigger problems at play. And uh, you should address those rather than just lubricating the ammunition. Lubricating the am ammunition has its whole set of own problems in itself. Right. And uh, one of the big ones uh, comes to mind would be excessive head thrust. Very excessive head thrust, uh, leading to a higher bolt velocity, especially if you're using, uh, obviously if you're using semi-autos. But so head thrust, that's the actual force, the head of your your cartridge pushing on that bolt face. Yeah. And that's, you know, kind of supposed to be a certain amount here. So you have an increase in head thrust here, right? So the head of that case, or that case in general after you fire, is pushing really hard against your bolt. So that bolt, those lugs are in contact with the lugs and the barrel extension, they're pushing really hard. That bullet is trying to clear that gas system now, and you have all this excess, uh, for lack of a better term, it's not technically increasing your pressure, but it is in a way. You have all that excess pressure, and then once the bullet finally clears the gas system, now your gas is coming back, and it's trying to cycle that bolt, and those bearing surfaces are pushing really hard against each other, and you're just gonna have increased wear, you're going to have increased bolt velocity once it does open. So you may be over cycling uh, at that point. Uh, it's going to be, you know, maybe maybe the brass is having time to clear the ejection port because your bolt's moving so fast. Maybe it doesn't. So you're just creating a whole bunch of other problems. Not to mention the uh, false pressure signs of the actual ammunition itself. Sure. Your primers are going to be blowing back. Uh, you may even rupture a primer pocket or something like that. Um, Luckily, the AR platform is so overbuilt that uh, you know it, it doesn't manifest itself as a you know a complete case failure or anything like that. Normally, the gun holds together no matter what. Right, but uh, there there are definitely some some issues with that. Uh, there are firearms or a, a firearm that is designed to work with lubricated ammunition, but we're not talking about that because that's a very rare scenario. Yeah, an old Luftwaffe rifle from World War II. Um, the one place you can get into trouble, real trouble, is if you have a weaker design where, set, you know, excessive uh, head thrust can actually set back the lugs that your bolt rests into. I'm thinking like the old Remington, uh, no, the Winchester 43, the Remington 43. Uh, Remington the, 742s? No, the, the, the bolt action in 22 Hornet and uh, 218B and all those, that was a 43, I think. And those guns will stretch over time anyway, and if you were to do that, uh, it would just accelerate the wear. And some of the uh, 22 Magnums that came out early on that were made out of soft steel, you know, just marginally strong enough to do that. You know, the, the root of the bolt is just locking into the receiver. You don't want to lubricate that ammo, make it any harder than it has to be. Right. Yeah, just a, a lot of issues there. And if you're a hand loader, uh, once you size your your cases, just as a kind of a general rule, you should be wiping that case lube off of your ammo throughout right. your, your loading process. You don't need to leave that case lube on there. So what's actually happening? You have the, your, your case of your ammunition, you have lubricant on the outside of that, then that's going into the chamber. Whenever you fire, your firearm, that case is going to expand. There's no room for it to expand if there's a 
basically a, a lubricant on there no. acting as kind of like a not hydraulic. As, not as much room anyway. Yeah, not yeah. as much room. So that's why it creates so many issues. There's no room for it to expand the way it should. So it's got to go somewhere, and that's usually that primer pocket area um, or primer area, and that's where you see your issues. Plus with a semi-auto, you're going to wind up with some sludge in that chamber from the residue of the room oh, yeah. attracting powder and whatever else. Yeah, which ex exacerbates your problem yeah. that you're already having that's yeah. leading you to think that that's a good idea anyway. Uh, so it's not. So do not lubricate your ammunition. Right. Especially if you have like a blowback, straight blowback pistol or something. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's depending on part of that friction in the chamber to, to slow that uh, slide down. Yep. And without that, you run into, again, way more issues than, than you need to yeah. with that. So uh, there's, there's, I mean, there's no circumstances where it's really a good idea. I don't think so. Yeah. So uh, I'd consider that myth busted. Busted. Do not yeah. lubricate your ammunition. If you like to lubricate your ammo for whatever reason, please leave a comment below. We'd like to hear the hows and the whys. And other than that, uh, I don't see much disagreement here. Yeah, no. So, um, yeah, let us know in the comments down below. I'd like to know your reasoning, yeah. uh, and I'm sure someone will try to correct you there. So let's just uh, oh, let's, get, so. let's get the comments going. Let's let's see what ends up. All right, hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time when we bring you another episode of Smithbusters.